Greetings everyone. Today we are glad to have with us Mr. Keith Monia, who is a retired marine engineer and has spent 33 years of his life sailing across seas and oceans and traveling across continents. He pursued his higher education in engineering and marine studies and currently provides tuitions for English, history and geography until grade 12 from his home. Thank you very much for joining. It's a privilege to have you sir. So beginning with the first question as a marine engineer you have spent a substantial part of your life at sea so how was the experience of traveling around the world the experience of traveling around the world was very beneficial for the simple reason it opened my eyes to the different types of people i met the different cultures the different habits the different types of uh, food and so many other differences that we had and uh, it changed my way of thinking about people from other countries okay so so once you are at sea are you still subject to the laws of your country how oh, yes because i am flying under the flag of my country okay i am i am flying under the flag of my country so i am uh, subject to laws of my country but suppose as i want as if i was working for a foreign company let's say an italian company then i am under the laws of italy okay that is the maritime rule and is there a separate marine law uh, or marine code of conduct and is it universal in nature yes there is a marine code of conduct and uh, uh, it is uh, it is applicable to all the countries who are who are allowing ships to sail under their flag okay so is marine engineering is generally considered to be a risky and rough profession so how did you cope with the stress and challenges posed by your job to start with to start with i had already uh made uh, made up my mind to join shipping from a very young age and i worked towards it okay mm -hmm. i knew i knew uh, the various challenges i would face the difficulties the staying away from home for long periods of time rough mm -hmm. seas and so many other uh problems that would crop up uh, during my time out at sea yes but uh the love for the sea and for engines uh, kept me going and i was very happy in that environment how is marine engineering as a career in the present times i cannot exactly say now because things have changed very much in the last 20 years uh now let uh, let me put it this way see 50 years ago a ship could have as much as 35 30 35 people on board okay or even more than that also uh nowadays the ships are sailing with the minimum amount of crew that means there is more workload upon officers engineers and crew Mm -hmm. because they have to do the work of uh, the seamen or the other people who were supposed to be with them are gone you see that is the rule now over there of course the salary is increased increased very much mm -hmm. and uh, people are mostly they are happy with the salary mm -hmm. otherwise uh, they are not too happy so the working conditions have deteriorated and uh, then the pressure has increased no working conditions are the same of you you see because uh, in foreign companies they take their ships to dry dock and do all the work there mm -hmm. okay so there is a very minimum amount of work to be done out at sea well in indian companies they do uh, just enough over there for the ship to get that uh, pass over there to sail okay. okay 
and then uh, there is a difference in uh, the attitude. Mm -hmm. You see, in, in foreign companies, they are willing to spend money on their ships for getting repaired and all these things because they know from they know that from uh, dry dock to dry dock, they don't have to work very much. Okay. But but uh, uh, Indian companies are not like that. You see, Indian companies, they want their jobs to be done from port to port or when the ship is at anchorage and all these type of things over here. So mm. the work culture is different from our Indian way and from the people from other countries. Okay. Ships and marine vessels have uh, historically been found to spread diseases and epidemics. So what steps do mariners generally take to stay safe and stop the spread of ep epidemics, both uh, aboard and uh, on the ship? Oh, no, 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 no. Now I, that used to be during those days when there was sailing ships. Okay? okay. And those ships were infested with rats and lice and whatnot. Okay. Mm. But over here, as the present day, present day meaning I'm talking about 50 years back, maybe even more. We have a thing called fumigation. Mm -hmm. People come over here and they fumigate the whole ship. They have uh, different types of fumigation over there for rats, for cockroaches, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the ship is always fumigated uh, approximately every six months. Okay. So the question of carrying epidemics and all that doesn't arise. Okay. How bad is the situation of marine piracy in the modern times and do we have any safeguards against the same? Oh, we have, according to my knowledge, we have two very uh, dangerous points where piracy is concerned. One is in the Gulf, in a place very close to, uh, the, uh, to Aden. It's a place called Ismailia. Okay, they don't have any economy. They have nothing except looting, killing, and piracy. Uh, there's another place over there. It's a triangle between and the in the Malacca Straits okay. between Philippines, Hong Kong, and. Uh, Philippines, Hong Kong, and I think uh, it's Indonesia over here. Now, Indonesia has a very nice place to hide uh, boats mm -hmm. because they have over 13,000 islands and uh, you cannot patrol all that whole area. So it's a very nice, cozy place for pirates to hold up over there and wait for piracy to be uh, undertaken. But uh, in the last 25, 30 years, when piracy became a uh, menace over here, hmm. the different uh, countries, they came together. Now, uh, presently, India is also sending their, their warships over there to patrol these areas so that there is a safe passage for ships. But still, you will always get some time or the other uh, ships being pirated. Uh, ships being taken for ransom, which was done just, I think, about two years back in Ismailia. And like this, uh, like this over here, there are so many instances over here. But now piracy is coming down because the different nations of the world, USA, UK, France, or all these places, Egypt also, India, mm -hmm. China, they all send their warships over here to escort the ships or the convoys that are passing through the Suez Canal and through the Malacca Straits. Currently, we have, a, we have video conferencing facilities and a lot of uh, developments in the telecommunication sector, which is communication at the sea. How was it managed back then during the years of your service? For well, that time, we had, uh, we had a telegraph system over there. And then we... Then and then we had uh, uh, messages that we could send to our agents 
and those agents could send the messages back to our company. Company means the head office of the company. Okay. 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 There was a system over there. It's not that we did not have. Then, of course, where the richer countries over there started importing in their different machines and all sort of things over here. And then uh, things advanced very much. Mm -hmm. But now everybody is more or less on the same foot. Okay. Proceeding with the questions related to education. Firstly, why did you choose the path of imparting education? See, I was involved in this uh, education from my school days. Uh, we were a group of boys who started a night school and uh, the night school is still running till today, as far as I know. I always had the urge to take up uh, teaching, but uh, there was a bigger love for me and that was sailing. So I took up sailing and left teaching, but there was always that urge over there to keep in touch with teaching over there. And from the age of 16, I've been teaching on and off as and as in when I came back for leave to different uh, students who needed help. So that is, uh, and I, of course, I like to teach. I like to take up a challenge, especially when I see uh, a student who is weak, who is a troublesome student, I like to take that challenge at least to put in one or two good ideas into his or her head that will be beneficial for the for them in the future. And that's very inspiring, sir. So how do you assess the role of a teacher in building the society, especially in the current situation where the physical connect is absent? See, teachers have a very important role to play they must take their job seriously and understand that they take the part of the parents. They must guide the students so that even if they do not like a particular student, all students have to be treated alike. Mm -hmm. They should give, they should be uh, available to their students whenever a student needs them. Not to push their ideas, but to help the students over there with their ideas and to guide them on the correct path. Yes, so, uh, students, uh, stu uh, teachers, teachers are very much uh, needed in a student's life because many a, many a good teacher has been looked up to and has been honored for doing the work that they were supposed to do. Yes, sir. So therefore teachers are like many gods who have been sent down among us. But of course, in between there are a few bad ones. That, mm -hmm. of course, you have to take along with the... Do we school. have to undergo any formalities in India to become a tuition teacher? No, no, there are no formalities. But I'll tell you, in my case, Obia, I love teaching. And the subjects that I, that I am teaching, I came first in, first in them throughout my school life. Mm -hmm. So I was very good at those subjects, Obia. And that is why I took it up as... Uh, as a tuition over here to help other boys and girls who are not fortunate to come from an English-speaking background. Do you believe certain rules and regulations are necessary in order to ensure certain standards for the quality of our education? For example, a fixed curriculum for all the schools and a fixed, sub fixed list of subjects? Uh, yes. It is important to here because as you can see, uh, if you open the newspapers today, if you want today's newspapers, you will see over there that the different boards are having a different way of marking 
and different timings, different dates for releasing the results. Everything is all sort of mixed up. Whereas in foreign countries over there, you can go to any part of the country, mainly in Europe. I know about this mainly in Europe. If any, like if you go to say Belgium, you will get the same the same books for the same class all over. You go to Australia, it is the same thing. You see, they try to keep everything uniform so that the students all learn the same thing, no matter which part of the country they come from. Unfortunately, in our country, it doesn't work that way. We have got so many different types of boards, different mark, uh, marking systems, and uh, other things are over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe for us, this way could be good. I do not know. Maybe uh, this different boards may be a handicap on one hand, or it may be some a godsend or so on. So there is nothing wrong in that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir. Uh, what role, in your opinion, has science and technology played in uniting the world? Ah, one sec. Science and technology has connected the world and made it a very small place. Okay. Yes, sir. Previously, if you go, you don't have to go back many years. Previously, when we wanted to write and give information to any friend or relation in a foreign country, well, we had only one thing, uh, letter writing, or we had the phone. And the phone in those days also was not a very good uh, instrument because it was always getting overloaded, jammed up and all sort of things. But nowadays with all sort of emails and, and uh, uh, this type of visuals and all these type of things over here have come and come together and helped us to come together more faster and help each other in times of trouble and times of catastrophe. These uh, technologies over here are bringing us and helping us to do good for mankind and hopefully that things will become better still in the future. Thank you very much for addressing our questions and uh, patiently answering them in a comprehensive and simplistic manner. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Welcome. <laughs>